ladies and gentlemen. The next item on our program tonight is the men's 400 meter sprint. On your mark. Next up is the fireworks display in celebration of the 70th birthday of our glorious dictator, Korea Six Seco. After the fireworks show, our special forces will stage a live ammo combat simulation for your entertainment.
knows that you are an undercover assassin being sent in to kill the dictator at his birthday celebration at the local stadium. In order to do that, you need to infiltrate his security unit, and um, you dress up as uh, you're dressed exactly like one of them, so you should theoretically pass as one of them. So, in order to get into the stadium, you drive along this uh, path, and uh, I put a lamp, a light here, so that's easy to remember where to turn. Another lamp over here, marked a couple of drums, and put some grass cutters to to clear the uh, the grass. There's a there's a big bush over here, so I use um, a ter high terrain objects uh, module, which is extremely useful. Come in through the back entrance, turn the car around, park it for a quick getaway. And you move in here, um, there are a number of lights that I've uh, positioned uh, in various places around the stadium. There are, I think, 28 lights in total. And I toggle these lights on and off quite regularly during the demo, as you remember. So the way to do that is by setting damage on them to uh, 0 0.95, that will switch the light off, and uh, set damage to 0 to switch them back on again. Over here we have some guys sitting down, and uh, the way to get them to sit down very easily is just to, in this case I've named the chair, in this case chair 1, and this would be the unit name, sit 1, and that's chair 1. And so what it does is just simply puts you into the chair, puts you in a sitting position, orientates you to the, based on the, the chair orientation. And um, so each of these guys are sitting down. These guys are queuing up for some food. We enter through here into the stadium. Now the stadium has approximately 100 civilians. So in order to maximize frame rate, these guys have all their simulations switched off. Now they're all sitting in the stands. The VIP box is where the president is. We've got some uh, blue four units, which are man one, man two, man three, and man four. These are the uh, security detail for the president. And there's another one, man five. These guys um, all set captive and switched into various idle standing positions. Now to get the uh, civilians to sit down in the stands is quite tricky because this um, this uh, stadium actually is a terrain object, so you can't really attach units to a terrain object. So what I do is I just embed a piece of concrete into the uh, underneath them, and I lay, I give that a variable name. Like in this case, it's base three, and then I put them into a sitting position, and then I attach them to the base. So this is uh, an X offset of minus 2 from the center of the base. So minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. So it's relatively easy to position. So you can get five guys on one of these concrete blocks. So I position all these units. Quite a tedious process, but the, actually more, it was more tedious uh, dressing them up to make them look kind of random. So just to make it more interesting and make it look a little bit more alive, even though their simulation's off, their heads still turn and so on. So they do look partially alive, but not really. And there's a couple of guys that have got, that are running a little uh, animation. And uh, like this uh, spawns a, a new thread. And uh, while he's alive, sleep random 12. And then he plays this uh, acts uh, civilian listening. So he looks like he's he's playing some sort of random standing position. Uh, and then it sleeps for another 15 to 25 seconds and then repeats the loop. So there's a few of these guys around just to make it look like there's more uh, action going on than there really is. Same thing with, this, with the uh, president. There's aid one, aid two, um, aid one, aid two, the president, uh, man five, which is one of his security guys, and then the friends of the president. There are seven of them, from friend one to friend seven. Uh, um, one of the things, is, cons considering that I'm going to come in and shoot one of the shoot the president, uh, obviously you would like if I shoot the security detail. I don't want these guys to just ignore the fact that some guys just dropped down dead right next to them. So I need them to react. So I'm just using another little trigger and it says if not alive, man 5, which is the security detail that's next to the president, or the president's not alive, or aid 1 or aid 2 are not alive, then do this. And it starts a new thread. It makes the player an enemy to them. 
by giving them an ad by giving the player an ad rating of minus uh, 100 um, it sleeps for random one detaches the unit because uh, we don't want them all to react exactly at the same time so it detaches them it switch moves them using remote exec so every so it switches across the network uh, and it sleeps for 0 0.5 second random uh, sets a capture state to false um, it, tells, it sets them to uh, gives them an instruction to look at the player for man five president aid one aid two and so on so whoever's alive will essentially kind of jump up and uh, unfortunately there's no direct transition so I mean it's a direct transition there's no intermediary animation so we'll look a bit jerky but uh, there's no real alternative way to do this um, then there are two civilian uh, hiding animations. These are a seated position where the where the guy puts his hands over his head because he's like really, uh, really worried uh, or scared. So it selects uh, it selects a random animation, and then it remote execs uh, switch moves them uh, friend one to seven into either one of those um, scared states. So any one of these guys get shot then all these guys like in their seats they're sitting down they put their hands on their heads and they react as if they're scared these guys jump up and uh, whoever's alive uh, and look at the player um so so yeah so this happens across for all civilians uh, as far as the the attachment to the underlying object then we have the we have um a little hidden trigger over here a hidden marker and a trigger which deletes any civilian that enters into this area and then we have the, the the race starter and his animation is disabled and he's put into a, a starter position loop animation where he just stands with uh, with the gun on his side and he just stands uh, looking at the runners now I triggered the entire sequence using uh, Radio Alpha and the reason I did that is for tra testing purposes and also it gives, it gives me more control because this is really a demo. If I wanted it to, uh, to trigger this automatically obviously I could have just had uh, a trigger over here with you know if player is uh, in this list then you know it would run, it would start the race. So um, when I run Radio Alpha it spawns a new thread uh into the scheduler the pa uh which is this little unit up here or this little object up here which plays the sound there's also a loudspeaker over here which is called loudspeaker 2 and loudspeaker 1 these loudspeakers are used to play the ambient sound effects for the crowd um this one is used for public address systems so uh, so when this trigger is run when our radio off is run it says um target PA will be the object playing the sound, player is the is the target of the sound, so the person is going to hear the sound. Say 3D plays a sound called PA 400 meters, which is declared in uh, CFG sounds in description.ext. Then the, um, the uh, attenuation is 500, well the volume is 500, and the reason it's so high is because uh, Say 3D has some kind of a bug in it that tends to over attenuate sounds it's very quiet so I have to boost the sound up quite a bit to get it to sound like a public address system then it sleeps for 10 seconds then the starter says on your marks sleeps for one second and then start to start race script is started and I'll go through that just now now there are nine runners run one to run nine and you'll see they each are bound to their own trigger there's uh, nine triggers stacked on top of each other here and these these are lap counters for each of these units so if i look at run nine lap counter what it does is it increments the value for uh, a variable uh, run nine laps so each time because this is a repeatable server only trigger the reason it's server only is because these units are actually uh, local to the server so each time they run through run uh, run nine the runner nine runs through this trigger it will increment his run nine laps by one and then if uh, the value in run nine laps is greater or equal to the race race length which is set in one of the scripts then 
the race race end is declared uh, as a public variable and sent across the network and set to true. So now I know that race the race has ended. I use that to trigger a whole lot of stuff. Then it passes the unit name run line to end race the end race script, which I'll go through just now. These, as I mentioned, are race uh, runner one to nine. Now they are put into a standard running animation at a certain uh, animation speed coefficient. They run faster than normal. So they run down here and if they were just left to run in a loop, they would just carry on running. They would run through everything, they'd run through the wall and they would just disappear into the distance. So what it does is it gives them, uh, it keeps checking their direction so, and it sets their direction to the nearest, uh, to the next logical marker in the array markers. Uh, uh, into the array of markers. So there are three lanes, and it will basically say, okay, um, choose a lane. So randomly, out of the nine, they will choose uh, three, maybe three per lane, and they will run towards this, lane one one. When lane one one is completed, or they're just about at this position, then it will look for the next logical uh, marker position and check the distance, the difference in rotation and it will gradually rotate the unit to this next uh, marker position. And, and it will continue doing that until it gets all the way around, until it gets to here, in which case it would then see that it's finished the array, it will start at the array again and carry on, depending on the number of laps specified. In this case, there's only one lap, so they only will run around once, and then it will end, as you saw. To make it more interesting, um, the units are able to randomly switch lanes. So uh, this guy, for example, when he could switch to 2-2 uh, instead of 3-2. That means that he could then carry on running on the inside. He could, this guy could likewise move to the middle lap. And because they are staggered when they run out of here, they don't run out at exactly the same, uh, at the same moment. So they're going to stagger. And when they get here, they'll be able to cross lanes without walking into each other or running into each other or crossing into or, or having a duplicate uh, number of runners on top of each other. So these guys are constantly switching laps. So you always get a different result in the race. So, so you always have a different person winning the race. And uh, the, there are basically two or three scripts to, to handle this process. Okay, this is a start race script. So it checks to see whether this is being run on the server. If not, it exits. Um, it basically, for all the runners, the runners are, their animation is disabled. The ability to change animations is switched off. Um, their animation speed coefficient is set to 1.7. And then a whole lot of variables are set. Then the starter, the guy with the gun uh, plays the start a, start a pistol fire where he raises his arm and fires the pistol. That's remote exec using switch move um, so that everyone on the network would see the, this animation because um, switch move is, has local effect. Sleeps for three seconds. And then the, uh, you hear the sound of um, the gunfire. And after 0.2 seconds, it handles, uh, starts this loop. Coincidentally, it runs a separate thread where the starter um, checks to see which direction he's looking. And he follows, he looks down the track and watches them run down the track after he's fired his gun. But he then turns and faces the tunnel and goes into the tunnel and gets deleted. So then the loop that's run is uh, from zero to to seven. Oh, sorry, zero to eight because they're nine runners. Um, each runner is selected, and the runner and the uh, number is passed to a script called path, which I'll go into just now. And the runner is then given a an animation, which is the standard run forward running animation. And he is, um, well, until the race is ended, this will continue to run. Until that variable is set to, while it's not true, 
then do this. And it sleeps for the RTM uh, move time for this animation. Then uh, it does this for each of the runners. But we don't want the runners to all run off exactly the same time. So it gives it a, between a 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 seconds difference. Uh, so they are nicely staggered when they run off. So some of them are much slower than others. Uh, as I said, uh, you probably will notice that they change lanes periodically because there's nine of them that start off and uh, spanning about five lanes and they end up in three lanes and then they gradually change lanes while they're running around the track. That guarantees that you always get a different result in the race. So then uh, we need the crowd to react and so the sound effect race is played through loudspeaker 1 and loudspeaker 2 with an offset of 0 0.25 seconds. So you're playing the same file through two different sources and you get a slight echo effect and that creates the sort of uh, stadium effect that uh, rather than putting a significant amount of echo on this um, it's also difficult to get uh, to, to give this omnipresent sound, but it's at the same time localized. So I'm running at the sound of two different sources, but but uh, with a fractional delay. If you put them at exactly the same time, then you get some kind of weird effects. And so uh, in this instance, uh, it suits the purpose because it's a stadium and there would be some quite a bit of uh, reverb going on on the sound. Okay, so now we look at the path script. And what the path script does is they basically breaks all those yellow markers down into three into three lanes and there's a function which does the hard work of rotating the unit to the next logical marker in the array so it looks at uh, current it looks at the current direction the unit is facing it looks where the next uh, uh, marker is and it looks at the offset in terms of degrees and then it rotates in gradually over distance to face that next marker and um, essentially that's what it does and it allows him to randomly change lanes as I said so you always get a different outcome okay now the end race remember the uh, nine triggers that are linked to each of the individual runners the end race um, once the unit has completed the number of laps specified in the in the race length, then it fires this, and this will be fired by each and indiv each individual unit. So it checks to see if it's a server. It's not. It exits. It switches off the ability to talk. Uh, if the race winner variable hasn't been set, then uh, race winner equals the runner. So if no one has claim this variable then the race winner is the runner itself and then it hints to the screen it says race winner is name of the unit sleeps for random one seconds then it slows the unit down from 1.7 speed animation to 1.35 then sleeps for between 1.5 and 2.5 seconds and then it sets them back to to one and the reason it does that is so that when they come, when the runners all come through the finish line, they don't immediately all stop at the same speed. It, they run, some of them run on further and some run on uh, a shorter distance and then they all come to a stop. Then if the, if the unit is the race winner, then he plays this animation, uh, remotes exec switch move again. And that's the animation where he jumps up and, and puts his arms in the air and uh, and so on, and points at the sky and so on, making, making it look like he just won the race, when in reality he was actually getting excited by an invisible plane flying over. If you if the runner, in other words, all eight out of the nine that, that aren't the winners, they will play another animation, which is where they basically uh, put their hands on their legs and um, look tired after running a race. And then after 11 seconds, they all sleep for 11 seconds, and then randomly with uh, over a period of four seconds, they all turn uh, once the position of the markers uh, in the tunnel has uh, been established and put into pause variable. The runner then sets his direction to that marker, plays the same animation that he did when he was running around the track, but he's now running with a sp animation speed uh, coefficient of one. And then it waits until that unit is within three meters of the, the marker position and then gets deleted. There is a, 
uh, trigger in the tunnel that will delete all civilians in any event, but this is a could double check. Now once the race is over, I need a mechanism to start the fireworks. So I use another trigger and that just waits for race end. And um, 30 seconds after the race end, it spawns another thread. PA comes on and says, uh, ladies and gentlemen, take your seats. We're gonna have a fireworks display. And then uh, to celebrate the uh, glorious birthday of the dictator and then um, Sleeps for 16 seconds, then it switches the lights off, passing the variable false to the script toggle lights. Then the fireworks display starts. I'm not going to go into detail on the fireworks display uh, script because it's quite complicated. And uh, the script will be included in the uh, packed files for this demo. So you can get that on the Steam Workshop. Uh, I'll put it up on Steam Workshop and also a link directly to the zip file for this module. So you, uh, for this uh, uh, demo so you can get all the scripts that are and and the entire mission from uh, from that zip file if you want it and uh, if you need to you know pull out various scripts or use them for yourself you're welcome to do that as long as you give me credit uh, please okay so the fireworks display starts approximately 30 seconds uh, sorry 46 seconds after the um, race has ended and then uh, 100 seconds later after the race has ended then the lights come back on and a variable war game started a global variable war game starter is set to true now this trigger will fire and then it will trigger this show hide module which will show the units in a synchronized trigger and you'll notice this triggered a link to a trigger over there and it's linked to a trigger over here now this trigger is currently set to uh, civilian present so you say, well, why on earth is it civilian present? Well, the reason for that is that everyone in this group, everyone here actually is a civilian. And the way you make op four and blue four civilians is by setting them to captive. So set captive true, set captive true on the pilot and his co-pilot. And this is R1, the red one group. And it moves everyone into heli R, which is the red heli for each unit's group. This sets the captive state to true, sets their skill to one for each of the units in this group. Switches on their gun lights if they have them, and then it adds a handle damage event handler so that they can take 10 times the normal damage before they die. So it makes the gun fight a little bit more interesting. Uh, it also gives them infinite ammo with a add event handler fired. So they each get the same, each get this, uh, forced on gun lights and they get the handle damage and the uh, infinite ammo uh, event handlers. So they all get dumped into the chopper. The chopper has its own waypoints and the red group has their own waypoints. Um, and exactly the same thing is happening on the, uh, on the other side with the blue four. These units are all hidden in the beginning of the mission with the hide unit object, hide objects and synchronized trigger. So I've got a trigger synchronized to it and that will hide these objects. And when it does that, it sits, switches off the simulation. So these guys all um, will not react to fire and so on. So essentially they're invisible and their simulation switched off. When the simulation is switched on, as I said, with this trigger over here, then the helicopter will power up. The helicopter pilot will fly into this waypoint. You'll then move to this waypoint. When that this waypoint is uh, condition is true, or when it's completed, or active, then it sets a variable uh, which overrides the default number of ropes, repelling ropes from the helicopter. To in this case, it sets it to four. It then um, sets the uh, tells the heli red heli to, to move to 25 meters to this position, and then to repel. Uh, using Duda and Rip Rupertel's excellent uh, repelling script, um, advanced repelling script. Uh, so the helicopter will move to this position at 25 meters and then will repel out in two groups of four ropes, the eight units in the cargo space. And the same thing will happen with the blue force over here. Uh, there's uh, a goalpost here, so I got rid of that with the, another one of these uh, terrain object, high, high terrain object. Uh, modules and then um, when the 
when the blue force uh, leader, like vehicle R1 equals R1, meaning R1 is no longer in the vehicle, then it will fire this red smoke, and the blue smoke will fire on that side when the blue force uni unit is out. So now we have uh, the, the eight units on the ground, and they will then start moving to their waypoint. This waypoint is a move, and, uh, and then another move, and then seek and destroy. And the reason there are two moves is to ensure that uh, they don't trigger the seek and destroy too quickly. And the same, exactly the same thing is mirrored on the other side, so the blue force will do the same. So they're on the ground, as they start moving along, uh, they won't get to, they won't trigger the, they won't get uh, or activate the seek and destroy waypoint until they get past that waypoint. But they're still captive, so they won't fire, fight each other at this point. So we need a mechanism to trigger them uh, into a fighting. In other words, we need to switch them out of the captive state. So they go back to the original uh, sides. So I've got to check to see that everyone's on the ground. And the way I did that uh, was just to check whether B8, the last unit in the blue group, and the first unit in the blue group, and the last unit in the red group, and the first unit in the red group uh, are out of the vehicle, and that they are touching the ground, because then I know the whole team is on the ground, or both teams are on the ground. And as soon as both teams are on the ground, then both, all units in both teams, their captive state is switched off, and they are not allowed to run away. And so they start fighting each other. So now the, the FSMs kick in. They reach this, uh, the trigger. Uh, sorry, they reach their waypoint, seek and destroy, and they'll start shooting each other. So that's useful, but we still have a problem because we need to now keep track of how many of them are alive, who's died, and then eventually kick up a score and say the blue team won or the red team won. And so I'll just use another trigger, race end, 100 seconds after race end, it spawns another little thread and it starts two, sets two variables, global variables, a live blue team, live red team, counts the number of alive in each group. And then it starts a while loop. And while one of them is alive, at least one of them is alive in the red team and the blue team, then do this. So it keeps calculating how many are counting, how many are alive. Then it puts a hint on the screen the blue team, uh, first element in the formatted text is a live blue team. So the number of a live blue team divided by eight times 100. So in other words, it's a percentage. So it'll say blue team 100, red team 100. And as one of them gets uh, gets killed, then it's 12.5 minus 12.5 per, per loop. So it sleeps. And then... Um, when this, uh, when when one of these teams has been completely annihilated, then this loop will, this while loop will end, and then it will evaluate the state of the remaining units. Uh, it will check to see if uh, if the red team are dead. If the red team are dead, then the win text has blue team are the winners. If the blue team are all dead, then the win text contains the ver contains the text uh, red team are winners. Uh, if they both mysteriously die at the same moment, maybe through grenades or whatever, then the win text will be the game as a draw. And then what it does is it puts that text on the screen in big white uh, letters using um, BizFunk Dynamic Text, which is a very useful function. Uh, look on the Biz Wiki for it. Uh, it's very easy to use. You just put your text middle of the screen. You can decide whether you want it to scroll up, scroll down, or just sit on the screen. How long it stays in, and so on. Very easy to use. Um, and then the uh, PA comes on and plays a, a background sound of people clapping uh, because everyone, uh, one of the teams, won which is great, but we still have one problem, and that is we have now we've got the winners standing on the field, but they need to get off the field. So we need to get a, have a way of getting rid of them. So uh, if one of the teams is zero, um, then we can fire this, this trigger, and that switches on the lights. If the... Um, if, the, if there are any units that are not alive, it'll hide them. That, that basically the body sinks slowly into the ground. Uh, for the entire 16 units. Then uh, if there are units that are alive, then it sets them back to captive, so they stop fighting, stop shooting, 
and uh, it does that for all of those units. Then it gives them, sets them to careless, staggered column, full. Then if they're alive, then uh, it basically gives them a do move statement. So it moves them to the hidden marker position in the tunnel where they get deleted. And so that's how the end process was uh, handled. Thank you for watching. And I hope this was useful. And if you liked it, uh, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if possible. And uh, as I said, I'll pack this in a, into a mission uh, and I'd stick it on the uh, Steam Workshop. And you can download it. Uh, I'll probably put a zip file link to your Dropbox link or something as well. So uh, you can try it out. Um, if you use the scripts, please give me credit in your missions. Thank you very much for watching and cheers. If you enjoyed this content and are new to this channel, make sure you click on the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you can get notified when we release new content. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.